Now, if you're anything like me and you spent far too much of your time lolling about on big travel bikes with slack head angles that let you get away with all kinds of murder, then the idea of jumping on a full-blown cross-country race machine probably makes you a little bit nervous. Uncompromising suspension and head angles, the sort of thing that's going to spit you over the front uh, without a moment's notice if you look at a big rock the wrong way. So when the Port to Port M2B race came onto the radar this year, uh, I had to decide what I wanted to ride. Um, I was really excited about riding this race, but with 200 kilometers of, uh, of riding uh, and some really big climbs in there, I wanted to be on a bike that was going to make it as easy as possible. So that meant a cross-country bike. But of course, my riding style doesn't necessarily suit a full-blown XC race bike. I tend to like to be in the air or taking dubious line choices uh, that may or may not be faster, but are certainly going to be more fun. And so I wanted a bike that was going to suit that kind of style. And that's when the intense Sniper XC uh, rolled into my life. You might remember that a couple of months ago we did a first impressions piece on this bike um, and I knew straight away it was a bike that was really going to sit well with me and was one that I actually wanted to take and ride at port to port. As you can see, it's been two weeks since port to port now. I still haven't washed it. It's still got its race plate on there. This is the bike that I did end up taking to the port to port MTB race and it was, in my mind, the absolutely perfect choice for that race and for my style of riding. So let's take a little bit of a look at this bike and uh, why I enjoyed it so much. Now Intense as a brand obviously have a real pedigree in uh, the downhill side of the sport. When you think about people like Sean Palmer, you think about iconic bikes such as the M1, you don't tend to associate this brand with cross-country racing. Sniper XC is their first full-blown cross-country bike in a little while. It's 100 mils of travel front and rear. It's filthy, filthy light. This one here comes in at a little bit over 10 kilograms, uh, which is really good considering that it's running a, uh, a dropper post and it's got um, some proper tires on it. So make no mistake about it, Intense are really going after the cross-country market with this bike in a big way. Uh, what makes this bike different to a lot of the other cross-country bikes on the market is the geometry. Now this thing is far slacker um, and far longer in the reach combined with a shorter stem and a wider handlebar than you would traditionally find on a cross-country bike. If you want to sum it up, it basically takes the geometry off a mid-travel trail bike and sticks it into a nice and light, efficient cross-country platform. So on paper, that sounded like exactly the kind of bike that I wanted. When you're riding a stage race where you probably haven't seen the course before, it's fantastic to have a bike that kind of lets you just blast into things uh, without worrying about it too much. You want a comfortable bike, you want something that is uh, going to let you get away with a few mistakes because you're probably going to be quite tired after backing up after a couple of days of uh, big rides. Uh, and so if you find yourself in a dicey situation, you need a bike that's going to be able to carry you through it. Um, or at least I do. And that's why a bike like this really ticked a lot of boxes for me. What I liked about this bike was the fact that although it is quite traily uh, in terms of its geometry, its performance on the racetrack when it comes to suspension efficiency is fantastic. Over four days of racing, I literally did not touch the lockout lever on this shock once. I felt zero need to toggle the shock on and off um, across the course of the four days of racing, and that includes lots of tarmac sections and smooth fire road climbs. It's just really, really efficient. There's quite a lot of anti-squat built into the rear suspension, uh, and that means that you can just keep on pedaling away and not be worrying about the rear end bobbing around, which for me is really great. When I'm in the middle of a, uh, a big ride or a racing, I hate to be stuffing around with lockout levers. Um, in my mind, it is just something I do not want to worry about. And so this bike was fantastic in that regard. Same with the fork, I didn't have to touch a single thing. In terms of the way that I set up this suspension, I spent a fair bit of time mucking around with it to get it just how I wanted it. The um, rear end is quite progressive. It takes a fairly big whack to get through to the end of the travel. Uh, and so I was able to run a little bit softer than I thought I was going to originally with about 30% sag out back. To get it set up uh, to suit up front, I ended up running the pressure a little bit lower um, than I would normally and adding a, uh, another token to the fork. And with that extra spacer up front, it gave it the same progression as the rear end and the balance was just fantastic. I loved it. I felt like I was using 90% of the travel most of the time, uh, except when I wanted to whoosh, huck it off a water bar halfway down a fire road, I knew that I could do that without blowing through the entire travel. The handling is heaps and heaps of fun. With the long reach and the slack head angle and a relatively short rear end, it's the kind of bike that'll just pop up on its rear wheel uh, and manual or wheelie for days, uh, which is something that I really enjoy in a bike. I like a bike that I can maneuver around on the rear wheel. I like a bike that's easy to hop and it's easy to jump. Uh, and for a full on cross country race bike, this thing really does that incredibly well. Now this bike carries the JS tuned uh, tag. 
um, which is Jeff Strever, the guy who founded Intense and is still the, um, the CEO of the company. And what that means is the uh, component choice, as well as the suspension tune, is totally suited to the kind of riding that Intense had envisioned for this bike. They haven't made uh, compromises um, choosing parts from um, all one group set, for instance, because it was easier and cheaper to do. And that's reflected in the way that this, um, this bike is spec'd. Uh, SRAM drivetrain with Shimano XT brakes, for instance, uh, and a KS Lev dropper post. Putting a dropper post, for instance, I mean, not a lot of bikes are doing that um, on a cross country race bike straight out of the box, so already uh, a big point of difference. I'm normally super picky when it comes to setting up my bike. I've got certain components and certain things that I uh, really like to run, but when it comes to the Sniper XC, I literally did not make a single change uh, aside from sticking some pedals on the thing before I uh, took it out to race on it. Uh, everything about this bike um, was perfect um, for me straight away. It had the brakes that I liked, it had a saddle that I liked, the bars and stem and everything worked for me. They're using their own intense wheels which I found fantastic, great for cross country riding and they're using Maxxis rubber, the recon tyres, super fast rolling. If you are riding in looser soils you're probably going to want something with a little bit more bite. It wasn't entirely roses with this bike, the dropper post became a real problem after three days of riding. It started to get super gummed up. I don't like the KS lever with the, um, the thumb actuation sitting on top of the bar. I hate having to take my thumb off above the bar when I'm riding. I find it's pretty dangerous if you're riding in rough situations and if you're tired. Now a lot of people had questions for me about this bike during Port to Port and the one that I got asked the most was is it suitable to use as a full-blown trail bike as well as a cross-country race bike? In my mind that depends a lot upon uh, what you classify as trail riding. It's important to point out that Intense do offer um, a sniper trail version as well which is slightly longer travel 120 mils front and rear otherwise the frame is the same it uses slightly uh, burlier components too wider tires uh, and the like this thing is definitely more confident more playful uh, more fun and generally a far better all-rounder than most cross-country race bikes but if your trails are super technical um, or if you're a heavy rider or if you like to slam the bike around um, then I would say no this isn't a trail bike it is still um, definitely towards the cross-country end of the spectrum and that really comes down to not the geometry um, or even the travel but the fact that the frame is built super super light um, particularly through the rear end if you look at the rear end you'll notice that on the um, on the non-drive side it has an extra strut running from the seat stay down to the chain stay. On the drive side that isn't there. And what that means is the rear end is pretty flexy to be honest. Um, on a uh, cross country race course um, where you're not really pushing the bike to uh, its full extremes, it's not something that you're going to be overly aware of. And a lighter rider like me, it's not such a huge problem until I started to really throw the bike around and then I could definitely feel it was there. So in terms of handling, it doesn't have a huge effect, but what I would expect is in the long term, it's not going to be fantastic for durability. If you're a heavier rider who pushes bikes uh, really hard, or if you're the kind of person who is an aggressive rider, uh, this bike is definitely on the too light side of things, um, if you ask me, for trail riding. For cross country racing um, and uh, that sort of stuff, it is absolutely fantastic. So um, be aware of its limitations, I would say, before you jump onto this bike expecting it to be the kind of thing that you can ride like your trail bike. Just because the geometry encourages you to do so, doesn't mean that that's what this bike is entirely designed for. So just keep that in mind, if you ask me. I'm going to keep riding this bike for a little bit longer and it's really good to be out on a short travel bike riding some trails that I would normally be tackling on say a 140mm travel 29er. To be able to take them on on a um, 100mm travel 29er uh, is a great buzz. It adds a different element uh, to trails that I was probably fairly comfortable on before in the past. So it's great to see Intense back in, the, uh, in this space and it's great to see the development of this whole new school cross country uh, thing that's going on at the moment uh, and we absolutely love it. So thanks very much. That's the Sniper XC from Intense and uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe or give us some comments or give us a thumbs up, whatever you like. It's always good to hear from you guys. Thanks a lot.